السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله This is Riyad Razazi We're coming you all to Homemade Happiness السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I'm just fixing the ايوه one second بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته This is Riyad Razazi Welcome 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 to Homemade Happiness and this is session number 12 and it's a continuation to our uh, session of yesterday I'm just going to give a minute for more people to join inshallah so that we can get going bi'idhnillah so that we can get going bi idnillah wa alaykum assalam ahlan 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 wa marhaban ahlan wa marhaban ahlan layla ahlan yu usama usama harun ahlan thabit ahlan lula robe just facebook up there and instagram right here ahlan yashmin Alaikum assalam, Khadija, ahlan wa sahlan, ahlan Rozal, Rozal Ali, ahlan wa marhaban. Alaikum assalam, matlai ta'ala wa barakatuh. So uh, again, if you're just joining, this is Homemade Happiness. And this is episode number 12. All right. Well, the clothing things are taking a little bit slow for people to come back and log in for some reason. I did some research in fact I did some research and I uh, and I did ask around uh, what is happening you know I asked some um, people who are involved on social media and they said Sheikh it always happens always happens right after Ramadan the attendance drops drastically <laughs> just after Ramadan so it is uh, it is actually Mormon now and for some reason I don't I still don't understand why but he said it's always after Ramadan the attendance drops drastically drastically you know for some time so it is what it is so Zakum khair for joining alaikum salam sana ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaba homemade happiness session number 12 today is about parenting inshallah today is about parenting Zakum khair all right, so uh, let's start. Let us start, inshallah ta'ala. I only, um, again, I, with regard to questions, questions, I will answer them, inshallah ta'ala, at the end. If there's any questions, I always defer them until the end. If there are any comments which I think are not uh, that inappropriate, I will not even mention them. I will just, with all the respect, I will ignore them, right? Any comment that are inappropriate to me, I would not, you know, I wouldn't just, I would just ignore them. And I would focus on my thing, inshallah ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, uh, if you want to take some notes, today's session is really, you know, it's going to be very, very intense because it's about parents. Remember about the uh, this uh, the uh, homemade happiness? We talked about, you know, foundations. Al-Usus, right? Usus. We talked about foundations uh, on how to have a happy home, how to have a serene home, how to have... Uh, a peaceful home right so I'm sharing with you principles that you could apply in your homes inshallah ta'ala whether a Muslim home or not Muslim home the same if you were to apply these principles inshallah ta'ala or these foundations um, inshallah you will have a very happy peaceful joyful home inshallah uh, just to quickly 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 uh, go through these 10 principles that we have covered so far Worship Allah together. Principle number one or foundation number one or la fondation <laughs> in French. The principe numéro un. 
foundation number one worship Allah together you know this is one something that we we need to do as a family at home this will bring happiness into our home when we pray Allah to when we pray together I'm not talking about missing the salah in the masjid when the masjid opens up no I'm not talking about that I'm talking about doing you know sunan together qiyam uh, al-layl together reading Quran together doing halaqa at home together sitting at home with the families and then remembering Allah together that's what I'm talking about brothers and sisters number two value your family these are foundations remember them and each foundation I you know I gave a session or maybe two you can always go back and watch them inshallah ta'ala all these are recorded on Facebook YouTube Instagram uh, value your family number three live with mercy Rahma. live with mercy always family is a blessing that's number four family is a is a is a is a ni'ma from Allah Azza and remember if you do not value a blessing Allah Azza will take it away from you this is very important very important Hamriana Lula robe Le Sana uh, all of you out there Facebook Instagram la famille the family is a blessing if you do not value that blessing Allah Azza wa Jal will take it away from you because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran wala in shakartum la azidannakum the more you thank me the more I shall give you the more you show gratefulness to Allah the more Allah Azza wa Jal will bless you and give you but if you do not value that blessing that Allah has given you, Allah will take it away from you. And then a man shall say at the end, Ya hasrata ala ma farwattu fi jambillah. Ya hasrata ala ma farwattu fi jambillah. Wa in kuntu lamin as-sakhirin. Ah, I wish. That person will say, if that blessing has been taken away from them, they will say, I wish. Ya hasrata ala ma falatu. I wasted so much time. I wasted so much time. Where was I? I spent so much time with my friends rather than my family. I spent so much time, you know, flapping around, whereas I should have really spent more time with my family, with my dad, with my mom. Now my dad is gone. Now my mom is gone. Now my brother is gone. Now my sister is gone. I should, I should have. Before you say, I should have... You have time right now. Value that time. Value and be grateful to that time. And then we that's foundation number four. Foundation number five, the pivotal role of the father. We talked about the father, right? We had many sessions just talking about that role of the father. And then number six, we talked about the father, the friend, and how the father should be more than a friend with his loved ones, right? Build that relationship. If you want your children to trust you, really, right? If you want your children to trust you, to come and talk to you whenever they have a problem. So you have to build that foundation from the very beginning. Don't wait until they grow old in age and to say, well, my son is not my friend. He does not talk to me. He does not share his or my daughter does not share her, you know, concerns and, you know, and stories and, and things with me and secrets with me. Because yes, she would not share her secrets with you, his secrets with you, because you were never their friend. You were never their friend. Huh? One sister, she was texting me, you know, like, my mother, she's emotionally abusing me. I don't know, I did not get involved with that. You know, I didn't ask questions and whatnot. But my mother is emotionally abusing me. I don't know, but it does happen. It does happen. You know, in my retreat in the UK, when we, you know, when we had that retreat, you know, about the mental health, just uh, last December, and we talked about you know issues and we talked about mental health and there are some 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 people who are who are um abused by their own parents not physical abuse you know because abuse is not necessarily you know physical it could be emotional abuse right so here we talked about the father the friend you know is foundation number six foundation number seven we talked about the mothers and how the mothers are the engine for motivation. When you're down, when you're about to quit, the mom, she's the one that comes normally and then she gives you that boost and that energy and, and she always are behind you and she says, I know you, I know what I gave birth to. 
right? So we talked about the mothers. And then foundation number eight, we talked about that amazing, uh, uh, the, that beautiful, beautiful, magical recipe, the, the, the magical Musa's, Musa's staff, the, the stick, the Musa's stick, right? It's called the language of compassion. Asa Sihriya. You know, the, the magical you know, staff of Musa, السلام, you know, this, this foundation is like that magical staff. It's just like that magical stick. It's called the language of love, the language of compassion. That's foundation number eight. You can go back and watch them. All the series are recorded. Go back and watch them if you miss them. Foundation number nine, we talked about respect and appreciation. When we talked about methods used to you know, raise your children, one method, you know, that I'm you know, one foundation that we spoke about is respect and appreciation to appreciate your children and to respect them regardless of their age. Not because you're the dad, yes, they have to respect you, absolutely, right? But you also have to respect your children, respect their, 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 um, their thinking, respect their opinions. Your, the opinions may differ from you, but you cannot just go back and say, I'm the dad, I'm the mom, I know better than you. You listen to me. There's something called emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence. So when, when he wants to come and share his opinions with you, or his feelings with you, and then you, you break them down by saying, um, you're, uh, um, what are you talking about that you're, you're sad? How can you be sad? How can you be disappointed? No, no, you're, you're, you're silly. You don't know what you're talking about. You're not respecting your children. You are cutting that tie for them to come and maybe share their feelings with you. That's foundation number nine, respect and appreciation. And, res and, and foundation number 10, when we talked about disciplining your children, you know, and we said no to using force, and no to using hostility, no to beating up the children. And I shared with you some methods that you could use instead, right, of, you know, using force. Then, then, and only then, if you, you know, uh, if you decide to punish them because of, because of uh, something really, 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 you know, bad that they have done and you have, exhausted all options with them and then they re they need to be punished so we talked about some some uh you know uh, pointers on how if you want to punish them how to do it right so that was yesterday my brothers and sisters and then we talked about the parents together Together, back to the parents together. So this is so far what we have spoken about in this series, my brothers and sisters. And with regard to the parents, when yesterday I said about what we say in Arabic, right? This is just like a preview again, like a, I'm, I'm, I'm recapitulating what I've spoken about so far. Yesterday I said in Arabic, it is worse than, you know, disobeying the parents because the term is something like you know when you rip apart a, 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 a shirt or rip apart uh, something rupture something you know some the water is aq, the water is aq, you know the water is sour so that's the the uquq is derived from something worse than just disobeying your parents dishonoring your parents and the opposite of it is goodness to the parents honoring the parents and i said um i said to the children yesterday to the loved ones and i hope the children i not when i say children yani our loved ones our our children they don't necessarily have to be you know kids i hope our children are here to listen to what i'm saying today not only to the parents because this series is for the parents the series is for the 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 uh, sisters and brothers the series is for the children the series is for husbands and wives uh, moms dads uh, grandfathers grandmothers stepmothers step you know fathers the series is for everyone i just hope that they're here listening when i said yesterday 
that, you know, about seven things that we need to do with our parents. There's more, but I just summarized them in about seven things. Consult with them. Consult, regardless of how maybe, mashallah, old you can get. But you, for them, you're still their son or their daughter. Consult with them. You're an adult, consult with, you, with your dad and your, your mom before you run a project, before you start something, before you do something. Even at school, consult with your parents. Be patient with them. Especially when they reach a certain age. Naam. You need to be patient with them. They're your dad. You cannot, you cannot change your dad. You cannot change your mom. He is who he is. And she is who she is. You need to be patient with them. Pay attention to them. Ihtam bihim. Ihtam bi ummaku bi abuk. Look after them. What does your dad like? What does your mom like? What do they like? Right? Um, help them. Number four. Help them as much as you can. Assist them as much as you can. Your father needs help with the car. Go help him. You need, you know, who takes the garbage out? Your dad, your mom, she'll... She's the one who takes the garbage out. Why don't you do it? Who washes the dishes? Always the mom? Always the mom washes the dishes? Why don't you wash the dishes? Why don't you one day say, Mom, you take a rest. We're going to take care of the house today. Help them. Why don't you tell your mom, Mom, why don't you take a break today? I will cook today. I will cook today. Help them. Assist them. Oh, your dad is going to the doctor? Baba, you go to the doctor? Nobody's taking you. I am taking you to the doctor. He doesn't have to beg. Your mom does not have to beg. Mom, you go to the doctor? Nobody's taking you. I'm taking you. Subhanallah. I know moms who beg for their somebody to give them a ride to the, to the hospital, to the doctor. And all the kids, I'm busy. Busy with what? Yeah, I'm busy with what? The khrab bait, astaghfirullah al-adhim. Abu al-busy. Ish busy. Busy with what, man? Whatever you have, cancel everything. Your mother is going to the hospital. Your mother is going to the doctor. Your father is going to the doctor. Cancel every, excuse me, every freaking work you have. <laughs> go with your mom and go with your dad to the hospital or to the doctor. Cancel everything. They need a ride. They need somebody to take them. Maybe your father wouldn't even tell you, it's okay, Baba, it's okay. No, no, stay, stay. I can go by myself. You say, no. No. No, Baba. No, Mama. I'm taking you. Nobody's taking you. You're better than that appointment I have, Dad. Dad, Mom, you're better than that appointment I have. You're better than that job I have. Work goes and works comes back. It's fine. But for me, if you were to leave, where, are, where am I going to find you? Am I going to have to go and visit you in your grave? No. I'm going to cancel everything and I'm going to go with you. You come first. Mom, you come first. Dad. I don't know. Number five, make them happy. Make your mom happy. Just like the day when you broke her heart. Just like the day when you broke her heart. Just like the day when you broke your father's heart. Then, yachi, go and make them happy. Go make them happy. Go put a smile in their face. Put a smile in their face. They always sometimes only hear, you know, bad things about us. Why don't you just go and make them happy? So, Lord. When the, the Prophet, he was asked, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, what are the most beloved deeds in the sight of Allah? Imagine Prophet Muhammad is asked this question. The Prophet Muhammad is asked this question. The most beloved actions in the sight of Allah. The most beloved actions in the sight of Allah. Say quoi? What are they? Then the Prophet says, Surur. Oh. He says, Surur, a joy that you bring in the life of a Muslim. 
imagine a, a, a joy, happiness that you bring in the life of, of some Muslim. But how about if that Muslim are your parents? Hmm? Do you think? Look what the Prophet says. He's a Muslim. You know, but you know, the most beloved deeds in the sight of Allah, the most beloved action in the sight of Allah, you bring some happiness or some joy in the face of a, in the heart of some Muslim. They go into some, some debts and you go and you pay their debts. They go into some sort of difficulties and you go and you alleviate the difficulties. You know, some Muslim. How about if uh, they are your parents who are going to those difficulties? How happy can you make them? And how happy can you make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well? Because this is the most beloved action in the sight of Allah. As the Prophet ﷺ said, you bring joy in the life of a Muslim. How about if that Muslim is your dad or if your mom? How happy would that be? How, how happy would they be? And how happy Allah would be because you made your mother smile. You made your father smile. You made them happy. The least, if you cannot do the least, huh? the least, if you cannot do that, stay away, stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. At least they don't, they don't, you cannot bring happiness to them. So don't bring sadness to them either. All right. So do you be fair? Don't bring sadness to them. So don't stay away from trouble as well. You only cause them pain. Well, at least well, then cause them happiness as well. Bring happiness to them. But if you're not bringing happiness, then don't bring pain either, man. Come on. Number six. That's five. Number six. You see how summarized things that you could do for your parents. Number six. Even if they're alive or dead, ask about their friends. Especially when they are dead. Huh? Their friends, yes. The Sahabi Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar, he, he used to uh, uh, look after his father's friends. After his father passed away, he used to look after his father's friends. He says, this is, I'm doing this, I'm, 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 I'm honoring them, you know, in the name of my father. Yes. If your father had a, a very close friend, if your mom had a very close friend after she passed away, then... Take care of that friend. Through that, you can still be honoring your parents. And number seven, my brothers and sisters, make dua for them. These are seven things. These are seven things. Make dua for them. Pray for them. When the Prophet Muhammad said in Sahih Bukhari Muslim about a man, in heaven, a man in Jannah, and he looked up and he saw himself يعني, in a very high rank in Jannah. A man saw himself in a very high rank in Jannah. Ya Rabbi, كيف وصلت لما وصلت إليه? How did I get, you know, how did I reach this position in Jannah? رجل في الجنة, the hadith is a Sahih Muslim. Hmm? Oh Allah, how did I get this position in Jannah? This is by virtue of your son making istighfar for you. Allahu Akbar. This is by virtue of your son or your daughter making istighfar and praying for you because the more istighfar, the more prayer that you make for your father or your mother, if they are Allah, if they are dead, that will elevate their ranks in Jannah. Pray for them, make dua for them. Every salah. Every salah you should pray for your father, for your mother. Every dua, inshallah ta'ala, every day you should be praying for your mother and your father. Every day. Do not leave a day up without you making dua for your parents. And say, oh Allah, have mercy upon them. Ilhamhuma, as they have raised me when I was a kid. As they have taken care of me when I was a kid. Remember one, two, three. Remember three things. All the children, all the youngsters who are here, all the loved ones who are here. Remember three things. Remember number one that you know, uh, 
remember that that you know the making them angry makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry remember this if you were to anger your parents you'll make you're angering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obeying them is obeying Allah and dishonoring them as if astaghfirullah you're dishonoring Allah Mm, yes, for sure. How? The ones who anger their parents and dishonor their parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes barakah from their lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes barakah from their lives, those who dishonor their parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts darkness in their faces. Those who dishonors their parents. Remember, don't ask me questions about, okay, Sheikh, how about, how about this? How about if my father, I spoke, you see, in the series, maybe you missed them. Go back and watch them. In the series, I spoke to the dads, and I spoke to the moms, and I spoke to the daughters, and I spoke to the sons. I spoke to everyone. So now I'm talking about you. Right? I spoke to the dads and I told them how the dad should be and how the dad should you know should should treat their children I spoke about that now I'm talking to you I'm talking to you those who dishonor their parents and anger their parents Allah Azza wa puts darkness in their faces their faces will not be bright there is no nur no nur on their faces subhanallah When the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, let him be uh, humbled into dust. May he be disgraced three times. May he be disgraced. May he be disgraced. May he be disgraced. The Prophet is cursing him. Who? Ya Rasulullah, who is this person? May he be disgraced. Whose parents, one or both, attain an elderly age. In his lifetime during his lifetime and he does not enter Jannah what does that mean his parents they attain an elderly age while you are still alive and for you to serve them for you to be dutiful to them and you don't use that opportunity to enter Jannah yani Jannah is right there open for you the prophet says and you do not take advantage of that opportunity so the prophet says may he be disgraced may he be disgraced may he be disgraced three times you have an opportunity you don't take advantage of it yes i just said earlier your father wants to go to the hospital your mother needs to go to the doctor no i'm busy why don't can i call you uber i'll call you uber dad I'll call you Uber, mom. I have I have an appointment. I have a meeting in Al Bu'al meeting. Stop for Allah Adim. Excuse me. I cursed uh, the meeting, but it's just the meeting I cursed. I didn't curse anyone. I cursed that meeting which is better than your father. I cursed that meeting which is better than your mother. Yes, I cursed it in Arabic. And I'm not proud. I'm I, I'm not I'm not sad and I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry if your meeting is better than taking your father to the hospital or your mother to the doctors or whatnot you know and you say I'm, I'm busy may he be cursed Num number one number two number two those who dishonor their parents number two the punishment will be hastened for them in this life before the hereafter who said this? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Hadith Sahih. The Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Hadith reported by Ibn Umar, Hadith is very sound and authentic. That the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam says, two types of sins, whosoever commits them, the punishment shall be hastened for them in this life and in the life of the hereafter. Number one, oppression. Number two, dishonoring the parents. Two punishments. One punishment in this life and one punishment in the hereafter. Remember,
remember something, my brothers and sisters out there? What goes around comes around. You know that? What goes around comes around. However you treat your parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you or afflict you with kids that will treat you the same. كَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَانْ إِفْعَلْ مَا شِئْتْ كَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَانْ Do as you wish. Do as you wish. Why? Because what goes around comes around. Yes, one day you will get married. Yes, inshallah, one day you will, you will have children. Yes, one day you will have children, inshallah. And those children, rest assured, as you have treated your parents, they will treat you the same. Rest assured. This is, a, it's a universal law. It is a universal law. Muslim or not Muslim. This is universal law, just like charity. You know, like, cha like charity, sadaqa. Sadaqa is universal law. Whether you're Muslim or, or not Muslim, if you give, Allah will give you back. The Facebook guy, he understood this. Bill Gates under, understood this. They're all doing a lot of charitable work now. 99% of their work now is all charities. They understood. Charity. The more you give, Allah gives you back. You don't have to be a Muslim. This is universal law. However you treat your parents, Allah Azza wa Jal will either bless you or afflict you with kids that will treat you the same. Rest assured. Number three. Bara'atun Nabi. Bara'atun Nabi. The Prophet Muhammad, in the Day of Judgment, he will be innocent from you. The Prophet Muhammad, he will be innocent. He will disavow you on, on the Day of Judgment. You don't want to go to sleep. You do not want to go to sleep while your dad is angry at you. Or your mother is angry at you. One man, imagine one man in the Kaaba. I swear by Allah. Do you want to hear this story? But the Naim, Naim Banat, my brother, my love. Do you want to hear this story? Sister Mariana, Sister Lula, Kiko Le Blanc, do you want to hear this story? Munisa, Sumaya, Yasmin, Khadija, do you want to hear this story that happened in the Kaaba? Hmm? Do you want to hear it? You want to hear my story? The Naim, you want to hear my story? This happened in the Kaaba in Mecca. This story. Yes? Yes, Naish? Yes, Nawal? Munisa? Mo Nisa? Mo Nisa, you want to hear it? Naim? Naim, yes, all right. A man in Mecca, in the Kaaba, right? In, in the Haram. In the Haram, I swear by Allah. He, he, made his way all the way despite all the zham despite all the crowd despite the crowd in the haram in mecca right despite all the crowd the zahma he made his way all the way to the kaaba to the wall of the kaaba to the wall of the kaaba and he held on the the kiswa of the kaaba he made his way and he was holding on the kiswa of the kaaba you know the cloth of the kaaba the black cloth, he held on the black cloth and he started making dua, crying and making dua. We got closer to him. What was he saying? He was saying, Oh Allah, avenge me on my son. He's making dua against his son. Oh yeah, Allah, my son, he, he did this to me. My son, he did this to me. My son, he did this to me. Ya Rabbi, my son, this. Ya Rabbi, take, take revenge. Ya Rabbi, take my revenge. Ya Rabbi, take my revenge. Do this, do it. Against his son. What did his son do to him? For this man to go all the way to Mecca, to go to the Kaaba, and to hold into the Kiswa of the Kaaba to make dua against his own son. Hmm? This is not a story I've heard. This is not study like it. This is something, يعني, man, imagine, imagine, and the dua of the father, the dua of the mother is granted. Granted, dua of the walid. The Prophet says there are certain duas that go straight to Allah. Azzawajal. Amongst them is dua of the mom or the dua of the father to his child. So this man is not only making dua for, you know, for his son or his daughter or against them. 
in Mecca. Where in Mecca? In the Sahan, in the main plaza where the where the where the Kaaba is. Where there? No, he goes all the way until he touches the wall of the Kaaba, and then he held on the kiswa, the cloth of the Kaaba, right there, making dua to Allah Azza wa Jal, right there. The pivotal, that's the hub of the whole universe, the center of the world. That's where the Kaaba is. This man is holding on the on the cloth of the Kaaba, making dua against his own child, his own son. The dua of the parents are granted. And in this today, I say, sisters and brothers, please, regardless of what your children may do to you, never curse them, never make dua against them. Please, I beg you. All of you. All of you. Never make dua against your children because that's dua. That dua, Allah can answer it. Allah can answer it and will answer it. So please, sisters and brothers, never make dua against your children, inshallah, and never curse them. Do you want Allah to, to be happy with you? If your parents are alive, make them happy. You know, people, they talk about the uh, world of the energy, and I believe in this a lot nowadays. You know, the, the world of the energy, ilm al taqa You know, as they call it in Chinese, the chi, the chi. You know, the, 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 the energy that surrounds you. Everybody has some sort of energy that surrounds him or her. And that energy could be weak energy or strong Positive energy, weak energy, negative energy, or positive energy. There's some people who have, mashallah, very strong positive energy. And there's some people that have weak energy. And this energy now, this taqa, can be assessed, can be measured today. You know, when you go and you sit next to your mother and just be, and just hug her or sit next to her, you know how much energy and chi at that very particular moment is surrounding you? Al-hala, in Arabic it's called also al-hala, or al-taqa. So much energy surrounding you. Just being there with you. You don't have to say a word. You do not have to speak a word. Be close to your mom. Sit, maybe hold her hand. Before you go to work every morning. Before you go to school every morning. Before you go to that meeting every morning, before you go to your appointment, before you go anywhere outside, go to your mother if she is alive. If she is alive, hold her hand, be with her, make her smile, ask her for that dua, and go, and you will see. You will see. Stay, give it a few minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. And just absorb that energy, that positive energy surrounding the mom. Especially if you have, mashallah, an elderly mom who is so much into the deen, so much into salah, so much into qiyam, so much into Quran. If you have that mom, Allahu Akbar. If you have that mom who just prayed qiyam the whole night making dua for you, if she's alive and she's still there, and you go and you hold her hand, you kiss her hand, and you kiss the other hand, and you give her a hug, and keep that hug for some little bit of time. Not like a fake hug. Keep it. Stay. Huh? And ask her to make dua for you. And then do your thing. And you will see. You will see. When the Prophet Muhammad entered Jannah in that tra in that journey, when he went and he was ascended into the into uh, into the heavens, and then he heard this Sahabi by the name of Haritha ibn Nu'man. He heard his voice in Jannah. Haritha. He heard his voice. Ya Shibreel, who's that voice? He says that Haritha ibn Nu'man. And Haritha ibn Nu'man was the most dutiful son to his mom. 
and the Prophet says, That's what goodness of the parents does. That's what goodness of the parents does. That's what goodness of the parents does. That's what it does. What does it do? It gets you into Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Mom, Mom, Ummi, Mama, Mama, Yimma, Immi, Ummi. Oh, what a beautiful word, is it? What a beautiful word is it? Just to say Ummi. Remember I said that initially, remember? Remember I said that initially? I said the most beautiful title after the title of prophets is mother. Remember that? I said it. The most beautiful title after the title of prophet is mother. Ma mom. Ummi. Immi. Yemma. The most beautiful title. And bir, goodness to them encompasses so many things. Goodness to the parents encompasses so many things, such as making dua for them, just, 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 such as helping them, assisting them, holding their hands, holding their hands, <coughs> bringing, you know, making them smile, making them happy. This is all considered in the goodness towards the parents. Goodness towards the parents is not just by obeying them, honoring them. It's just, there's so many things you could do. So many things you could do to be considered as somebody who is good and dutiful to his parents. When Allah Azza wa in the Quran, he said, and I mentioned this yesterday, the ayah in Surah uh, al uh, when, uh, in Surah al uh, Surah al Isra, Surah al Isra, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا الله has decreed الله has decreed it's a matter and it has been ordained there's no changes to it what is it that there is you worship none but Allah and that you be dutiful to your parents and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and if they were to reach a certain age don't say off to them don't say oh to them don't raise your voice to them or at them Abu Huraira, his mother called him once. Abu Huraira, the Sahabi. Abu Huraira. And then he says, Ya, na, yes, ummi. Yes, oh, yes, mom. And then he realized he raised his voice. The only thing he said, he says, Yes, mom. But then he raised his voice. He went, he purchased a slave and freed him for the sake of Allah. He purchased a slave and freed him for the sake of Allah just because he realized that he raised his voice by saying, Yes, mom. Yes, mom. That's all he said. I did say yesterday. Yesterday, when I said, I'm going to share with you something that will soften your hearts towards your parents. You remember this? All of you? Do you remember? Mariana yesterday? Kiko Leblanc yesterday? Mon frère? Mon frère Kamal, huh? those of you here on Instagram and those on Facebook, remember yesterday said, I'm going to share with you some action items that will soften your hearts towards your parents. If your hearts are not are already not already softened, I'm going to share with you something that will soften your heart towards your parents. Remember I said that yesterday? Right? Remember? Or here, here they are. Here they are. Number one. Number one. ذكريات الطفولة. What? 
remember when you were uh, let me remind you if you don't remember i will remind you i will remind you when you were, used to be a kid i want to remind you when you used to be a kid hmm? and your parents maybe sometimes would need to go out or the very first day when your mom took you or your dad took you to school and they left you at school and you were crying crying no don't leave me dad mom don't leave me you don't remember this maybe you don't remember well let me remind you let me remind you your very first day when they took you to school or maybe let me remind you of that day let me remind you of that day when they were late picking you up. You were still a kid. Maybe you don't remember. Let me remind you. You were a kid and they were a little bit late picking you up from school or from your whatever you were. And you were crying. You were crying. And then when you saw them, you were so happy and you went and you gave them a hug. Where were you? You were late picking me up. Remember, remember when you used to be a kid. Remember, let me remind you, let me remind you because you tend to forget. You brothers and sisters, you tend to forget. Let me remind you when you were a kid and you were sick. You don't remember. I'm sure you don't remember. You were sick and your mother, she did not sleep the whole night. She was by your head. Making the I'm crying. She walked your dad up and she says he has high fever. She has high fever. And your father got up like crazy. And then with his pajamas, he went outside. He drove you to the doctors, to the hospital. And he was crying and he stayed with you. You don't remember this. You don't remember. You don't remember. But I'm reminding you. And then the doctor was there and then the father after waiting two three four five six hours in the hospital in the emergency late at night late at night your father went to the doctor doctor please tell me tell me how's my baby how's my baby is he fine is she fine and the doctor said no alhamdulillah it's fine. It's just a, a little fever. It'll be fine. You don't remember this, but I'm reminding you. When your dad was taking you from one doctor to another, doing tawaf. Yes, doing tawaf. Literally doing tawaf. Yatuf. He making tawaf from one doctor to another, from one hospital to another, from one clinic to another. You forgot. Your mother, when you were in her room, let me remind you, because of course you forgot. Let me remind you, when you were in her belly inside, when you were sucking her blood, her calcium, you were sucking all her energy from her. And, and all the pain that you caused her, all that pain. But then when you kick her, for her, it's just like, honey in her chest in her heart when you used to kick her from inside how much you sucked from her she went through so much pain and she endured that pain nine months nine months bearing you in her inside her womb your mom nine months your mom who gave up her dreams. How many moms do you know of? How many dads do you know of? Gave up their dreams for their children's dreams. Just so you can do something with your life. Your mom, she gave up her dreams. So does your dad sometimes, yes. But moms, most moms, they gave up their dreams just for their children. You forgot about this. You forgot about this. You forgot about that dad. When Miskeen he went to the hospital because he had a he had problems with his with his with his arm. This is a true story with his arm. And then after all these uh, X-rays, the doctor told him it's gonna cost you this much money. You need this much money, you know, to fix your arm. Otherwise, we need to amputate the arm. We need to amputate the arm. And he had no insurance. The father had no insurance. 
He had no insurance. So hey, the doctor told him, you know, it's going to cost how much? He says it's going to cost you this much. Otherwise, we will have to amputate your arm. He told the doctor, doctor, just go ahead and amputate the arm. The other kids were there with him. Dad, but you have the money. Dad, you have the money. Give him, pay the money and save your arm. He says, no. The dad, wallah, he said, no. Why? He says, I was saving that money for your elder son, the elder brother, my elder son, for the elder brother. He's going to go to school and I was saving that money to pay for his school. I'd rather lose my arm rather than having, you know, my son not to go to school. I lose my arm, but I will pay for his school. You forgot about that. You don't know about that. Maybe your father never told you. Maybe your mom never told you. How many times she slept hangry just so she can feed you, your mom? How many times she slept hangry? She slept with pain, maybe cold. She took off that blanket and she put it on you, your mom. Let me remind you of this. That's why I said I'm reminding you. You forgot, but I'm reminding you when you used to be a kid. Why? Why? Why that harsh heart towards your dad or towards your mom? Why? حملته أمه وهنا على وهن وفصله في عامين. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran in Surah Luqman, verse number fourteen, when his mother bore him in weakness and hardship after his winning in two years, hardship, so much hardship. And the hardship of bringing you to life and the pain bringing you to life. Remember, remember this because you forgot and I'm here to remind you. Number two, that's number one. If this does not soften your heart, I don't know what kind of heart do you have. Number two, take advantage. If she is alive, if he's alive, your dad or your mom, Take advantage before they're gone. I could never imagine my first night without mom or without dad. Ask those who have lost their parents. The very first night at home without mom or without dad. Take advantage before they're gone. Especially the single moms, the divorced mom. You know how much sacrifice she has gone through? Just to provide you, just to help you and to assist you. She did not want you to feel any, any, any weakness from any side. She did not want you to feel any, subhanAllah, because you go and you're with your friends and whatnot, and maybe your friends, they have, you know, they may be able to buy things and whatnot, but your mother, the divorced one, especially, right? The single mom, she never wanted to feel that negativity. Subhanallah. She would go and do things this she can provide you. And so is your dad. Take advantage before they're gone. Take advantage. She did not want you to miss out on anything. Your dad, many times, he went and he borrowed money. Just so he can buy you what you wanted. And he never told you. He never told you. Many times. He went and he borrowed money to assist you. To buy you what you wanted. And he never told you. Take advantage before they're gone. Even if they were non-Muslims. Even if they were non-Muslims. You have to be obedient to them. Asma. Asma radiallahu anha wa ardaha. Asma. Bit Abi Bakr. Her mother was not a Muslim. And she asked Prophet Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah, should I be obedient to my mother even if she's not Muslim? The Prophet says, Yes, O Asma. Of course, O Asma. Of course, O Asma. A Asilu Ummi, do I tie my, my kinship with my mother? The Prophet says, Yes, of course. Tie that kinship with your mom. Visit her. Be kind to her. Even if she's not a Muslim. If for that, your dad, same thing. Even if he's not a Muslim. And as they ask you to commit some kufr, other than that, you have to serve them and you have to be kind to them and you have to honor them. Take advantage. Take advantage. Number three, befriend them. 
befriend them, befriend your parents. Take advantage before they leave. Number two, number three, befriend them. Befriend your mom and befriend your dad. You may say, well, they're not giving me a chance. Why, well, Achi, you start. You try. You do your best. You try to be their friends. Be the first one to move, to make the first move. Be the first one to make the first step. Your dad is your dad. I mentioned that many times. He is who he is, especially when he reaches a certain age. Khalas. Your mom, same thing. So you be the one to make that first step. You be the one to make that first move. Befriend them. Number four, worship Allah Azza wa Jal together with your father and your mother. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Pray together with your father, with your mom. When you pray, if they're not, pray for them. Maybe during this lockdown, because your dad cannot go to the masjid anyways, your mom cannot go to the masjid anyways, you pray together. And I guarantee you, the majority of the dua of your father or your mother will be just for you. They will be making more dua for you than for them. Ask, brothers and sisters, ask. Ask what? I'm going to end with this. Ask any successful person, Muslim, not Muslim. Ask any successful person, ask them, what is the secret of your success? The true secret of your success? He will say or she will say, maybe a dua from my mom, a dua from my father, maybe a, 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 a baraka, a blessing from my parents. It definitely has to be some sort of blessing from mom or dad. I asked them very, mashallah, I asked myself, I'm asked, you know, a lot of uh, successful brothers and sisters, you know, leaders out there in the communities, Muslims, friends of mine. MashaAllah, Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, MashaAllah, we used to work together for Al Maghrib Institute, you know. MashaAllah, Sheikh Muhammad, what happened? MashaAllah, this a dua of his mother. So many people, Hafid al Quran, Hafid al Quran, Sheikh al Sudais from Mecca, Sheikh al Sudais, the dua of his mom, the dua of his mother. Ask any successful person, brother or sister, the secret of their success on this in this life, it would be something that has to do with parents. Guarantee. Guarantee. Ibn Hajar, Al-Asqalani, the predecessors, the one who, you know, uh, do the Sharh of Al-Bukhari. The dua of his mother. So from today on, brothers and sisters, let us all, inshallah ta'ala, make a change. We make that first move. We make the first move towards our parents. Inshallah, we will befriend them. Inshallah, we will make dua for them. Inshallah, we will be patient with them. Inshallah, we will take advantage, inshallah, by, by this time that they're still living with us. Inshallah ta'ala, right? We'll take advantage of all this, bi'idnillah, from, from, from today on. I will not blame no more. No more blame. No more say this or that. No more. I will remember. Yes, I remember when I was a kid. Now you remind. Thank you, Sheikh, for reminding me. Because I did not know. Well, you didn't know. Now you know. Now you know. From now on, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to be the first one to make the first move, inshallah ta'ala. And if your parents are alive, go quickly to them and ask them to make one dua for you. I ask, wallahi, wallahi, I'm saying, you know, that dua that your father or your mother could be making for you, that dua will be the way that will pave the road to Jannah for you. That dua coming from your mom or the dua coming from your dad will be that, that road. It will pave the road to Jannah for you. Let's make a change. Let's make a change, my brothers and sisters. Go make them happy as you make them sad. Go make them smile as you make them cry. Go before they're gone. Sisters and brothers, Zakumullah khair, brothers and sisters, may Allah bless you all. Uh, face, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook is here. Instagram, I only have 20 seconds left and then it's going to cut off. I will see you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Tomorrow, it's a totally different session. Tomorrow will be about husbands and wives. Sister Fatima, make sure Brother Ghani is there tomorrow. Tomorrow is about husbands and wives. Zakum Allah khair. Barakallahu fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.
those of you on Facebook, may Allah bless you all. Zakum Allah khair, barakallahu fikum. Thank you for coming. We'll see you tomorrow, inshaAllah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.